I have my tea, so let's get on with the tea. And yes, I really did plan the largest Asian convention in my state. And no, it's not an anime con, unfortunately. I would like an anime con. Anime con would be really, really fun. But then all the people don't even shower. It's mostly white people. Not that I'm like racist, but like, you know, I, I just want to be with my Asian brethren. Asian people smell weird, but I sort of like the smell, you know? But anyways, this is the largest Asian convention in the state of Oregon. I fucking hate Oregon. And am I nervous about it? No. And I've been playing this convention for about a year now. It's finally coming alive today. I am gonna be on stage talking to people and am I nervous about it? No. Because a bitch is not gonna be caught sweating here, okay? It's six in the morning, I have to wake up at five to get ready so I can put on this nice outfit so I can demand respect, okay? So that I can demand people to treat me nicely because Sometimes when I look in the mirror, I'm like, I'm a big fat piece of shit. I look like a piece of shit. I dress like a piece of shit. I know I'm a big fat piece of shit. I gotta put on a nice impression to show people that I am not the big fat piece of shit that I see in the mirror every day. And that's the thesis. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, the premise of this whole Asian conference today is to be a social justice warrior. That was really, no, why, why did I do that? Maybe I am a big piece of shit. And that's a motherfucking tea. But yeah, today, this whole conference is about Asian inequity, Asian equity, Asian inequality. Oh, shut the fuck up, oh my God. Sorry. But yeah, today is just gonna be about social justice and how the Asian community can improve and how we can better ourselves in general. Because I'm so sick of this racism in society, okay? My parents literally moved to America just for me to feel oppressed by these fat people? No, at least be skinny and oppress me, okay? Look hot while you're doing it. I mean, actually, no, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like racist people are sort of hot, you know? Like the rednecks, Ooh, oh, oh wow. <laughs> I, like, I'm not gonna lie, some of them are pretty hot. But like, if you're gonna be mean, at least look fucking hot, okay? We all watch the movie Mean Girls, and what we know is that if you're gonna be mean, you gotta look fabulous. Oh my God, this is some like tea time fantasy, you know, where I'm talking to a friend, I have, my tea and I'm eating some like biscuits, you know? It's some like anime moment. And after that, we start having sex. Because that's why it's not important. It's sustainable. Do people actually do that? Like, how does it work, you know? Sometimes I'm scared that the crumbs from my snacks, they're gonna go into other person and they're gonna realize I'm really nasty, huh? <laughs> I am really nasty. But yeah, so let's continue on with my day. My love language is your time and attention. So I have my t-shirt right here, and this is like gonna be a little sexy time moment with me. So they actually had a small size, and I'm extra small because I'm skinny. But let's hope this t-shirt does not make me look fat, okay? Body dysmorphia is a real thing. Can we get back on the same page tonight? I have my script here on my pen. Let's hope I just don't stutter. I probably will. You guys don't know this, but I stutter a lot when I'm filming. Have you seen Hunter x Hunter? I haven't. Oh. He looks like that octopus man. <laughs> Show me a picture. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Wait, hold on. Man. Yes. Hey, 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 hey. Do you, do you guys see the resemblance? <laughs> yes, the resemblance. Octopus exactly. man. Exactly. Octopus tastes great. So. You should be proud. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Top of Yaki could never. <laughs> oh, okay, girl. Emotions are running really high. I think I'm gonna be in the bathroom peeking five minutes because of anxiety. But it's okay, I'm gonna lose weight that way. So, really, it's a win. Oh. Yo, d does anyone wanna. Oh, okay, that's just us. Okay, that's chill. Oh, okay, all right, cool. Okay, I know you guys are still like in the process of writing or drawing out your story, but I thought it'd be important that I share my story, concerning that I'm a table facilitator and like, I gotta do this also, you know? <laughs> I'm gonna start with my mom's side of the family or I'm just gonna tell her side of the story because it's sort of convoluted and like a lot for my dad's side. And so right here, this is my grandma. She died of cancer when she was 14. And this is my grandpa. He moved away to America to chase American dreams, effectively leaving my mom and six of her siblings orphans. And so my mom was 14 at that age and she had to support herself by finding like 
uh, jobs, which also gave her like a control issue. So that was a nice thing, I suppose. And at the age of, I think, 28, she was able to uh, finance her way to America, as you guys can see on this airplane. So I just wanted to like, make sure with everyone that I'm not a fob fresh off the boat. I'm actually fob the fresh off the vagina. That comes up to here when my mom's about 32. And that's when she first started college. And it's really important that you guys use protection when you're having sex because this is how my mom met my sperm donor. And in her stomach, that's not me, that's my brother, which is why she's sad. It's, he's a disappointment. But anyway, <laughs> fast forward to like three years after she gave birth to my disappointing brother, she finally gave birth to me, which is why I have no other younger siblings because I'm perfect in every other way, just to make sure with everyone. You know, we are all in a homogenous agreement with this. I mean, you guys better be, you know. I am the tail whistle baiter here. And so yep. here I am, now here, and right here it says end me because maybe my ancestors did not do me a favor by moving to America, okay? <laughs> I barely thought, but no, maybe I want to be in a third world communistic country, you know? They are brainwashed, but they're happy, so what, what's the real drawback here, you know? My dad's first thought of coming to America was when my grandma's brother, so I guess my uncle, in, in a sense, uh, offered him because he was already here. So um, my dad did all the paperwork and then he wanted to come here because he decided that he wanted to come here because he honestly saw like no potential living in China. So he decided to say, you know, it was like whatever. And uh, yeah, so he moved here. They came from like such a poor area that they, like, like, they thought that like, Americans were so privileged that when you go to Fred Meyers and like use a shopping cart, like you could just take the shopping cart back home with you because they saw like some person do it. It was obviously a homeless person. No, they had no car, so they would walk to the grocery store with their shopping cart that they stole, and they would get all their groceries and like because they were poor, they you know they used coins and like whatever they had to like pay for the groceries. Yeah, that's just like kind of give you like a perspective of like how poor we were. It was not online, nothing happened, okay? Nothing <laughs> happened, okay? Hey, you want to hear that? Hey, it's my chance, yeah. my chance, my chance. Yeah. Yeah. You better give me compliments. I worked really hard, okay? I'm detecting hints of uh, bougie. Yeah, bougie, and yeah. And lemon, I'm... and I would say it's, um, I feel like I'm in France right now. Exactly, yes. yeah, exactly. Right. That's my message right there. What's that saying? Is one, it... that equals one. No, I said 10, ten out, out of 10, ten equals one. Yeah. What hey, does that mean? Hey, 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 it's number one, all right? Yeah. Asian's number, number one. one. This is number one. Oh, Hold you on. look really bad, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you're about to go speak. How, how do you feel right now? I already pissed, so it's okay. I know I won't piss my pants. Right, no. But I feel like if I vomit, it'd be funny, you know? Obviously, because it's just eight. So. Yeah. Wait, am I speaking? I think I already spoke. Oh, wait. Oh, was that you speaking? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. No, it's okay. It's okay. Whatever. Oh, but wait. Was that to record you? It's fine, whatever. No, wait, no. That's, I feel so bad. No, it's okay. <laughs> I thought I thought it said 130. Oh no, it's okay, I don't mind. I really don't care, you know? Do you want a macaron? I made them. Oh, really? Yeah. Thank you. I mean, they haven't died yet, so that's how you know. There you go. Oh, no! My bad, my bad. It's okay. Moment of truth. Moment of truth, yes. Pretty good. When do these emotions start to set in? You know, this is like psychologist Andy. So when I was a kid, like growing up, um, yeah. What's your like childhood trauma? You know, there was this pressure to not express my emotions. Yeah. So that Causing led to masculinity. Bottling up a lot of feelings. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm like trying to work out that childhood trauma right now. And yeah. Just... No, I get that. I get that. And so like, what do you do to express your feelings? Like, do you binge eat like I do? Do you silently cry in bed in the middle of the night? Or do you ask for attention on the internet like some weirdo and attract negative attention like I do? Uh, <laughs> I don't think any of those. You know what I do want to do? What? I want to cry. And like how do you want to express yourself other than cry? Like are there any techniques that you want to do? I mean I kind of already do this but like I kind of just like want to say like whatever I want. It just kind of... There's no thaw, it's just my mouth speaks. Exactly. Without thinking about it. You know, it. just like canning for gold, the filter filters out gold, you know? So yeah. if you filter stuff out, you won't see that gold, you'll only find the water. What? What the fuck? 
That's not how it works, but you get you get it, huh? No. Anyways, that's psychologist Andy undoing intergenerational trauma one vlog at a time. Thanks. Like I remember hearing something about like this Lao man who uh, immigrated when he was younger, or his parents immigrated to America and gave birth to him because of like the, the beating on war and suddenly because I guess he was born on a boat or something, he didn't get the necessary document to be a citizen of America. And so somehow his accountant or someone um, flagged him for that, for his taxes, and then the FBI came and deported him back to Wow. So this is why I'm really worried about like filling out court documents. Because I'm like, will I get deported if yeah. I submit this? Yeah. And for me, it's not like only about being cognizant, it's by realizing that I have these privileges that these other like ethnicities don't have. Like I know that sounds terrible, but like it's these actions our ancestors have done for us to enable us to have these like voting rights or education or like just money privileges. But it's also for me to understand that hey, I need to do this for other people as well. If you guys do you guys understand. Yeah. Anyways, I do have to include this though. May 14th, there's a virtual conference. You guys should invite your grandmother, your grandmother's grandmother, your grandmother's dog, your grandmother's cat, the insect on your wall, the spider living in the crevices of your room, and tell them, hey, you need to learn more about AAPI history. <laughs> Okay, so I just got back from my convention and I am exhausted, but let me say that it's a good exhaustion. It's an exhaustion that you know that you did something with your energy, that you pleased someone, that you pleasured them, that you made someone happy. And that's sounding way too close to sex, even though I am a virgin. And other than being a chairman for this convention, I was also a table facilitator, whose main role was to facilitate the content at the table and like to create a discussion around everything and like to guide my table mates through the whole content that I created. Truth be told, <laughs> My table mates were either older than me, had more degrees than me, more educated than me, plain smarter than me. So like in actuality, I was really confused. I was like, maybe, maybe they should be guiding me. Not like this dumbass should really not be talking, you know? Like honestly, they had a better grasp of the material than I did. And I was the one who created the material. So if anything, I was the real embarrassment in this scenario. But I didn't go up on stage a lot because honestly, this may come as a surprise, but I'm sort of, people shy, you know? Like there's a lot of people and I'm glad that we restricted how many people could come because if there were more people, I would have pissed my pants automatically. But I'm very glad. This time I did not piss my pants and on stage I did not puke or anything. I mean, that would have been like really funny actually. But anyways, like thank God I did not piss my pants. I came really close to, okay? I was almost gonna piss my pants. But anyways, our keynote speaker, Manju Kulkarni, who is the founder of Stop AAPI Hate in California, she talked a lot about like Asian American history that's often covered in American textbooks, and she really taught me a lot. She like made me realize that, man, Americans fucking suck. America fucking sucks, you know? They are so discriminatory to Asian American. I'm, I'm a fucking idiot. But my point is, I really didn't know how fucked up Asian American history is in America considering that our education system in America fucking sucks. You know, we are all the idiots in the world. Americans are the fucking idiots. I, me included. But anyways, it's so bad that Hitler even denounced how terrible it is to live in America. Hitler, like he saw the racial disparities in America and he's like, I don't want that shit. Like, I, 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 like, like that's how, but anyways, I realized I probably couldn't put this in video or vlog this because, you know, it's we're on a military base. I don't know why. It's sort of awkward considering that Manjo Kulkarni was talking about how terrible American army was to people in Asia during like the Cold War, during the Vietnam War, during World War II. Yeah, it was a lot, okay? It was sort of ironic, you know? And honestly, I was sort of scared of saying a lot of the things that I could have said because I really did not want to get kicked out of the convention. You know, it was... It was scary. I'm gonna I'm be honest. There's a lot of army people watching us. You know, my FBI agent behind my camera, behind my iPhone was there as well. You know, I said hi to him. But besides that, when I was going up to the convention center, there was this dude in the army that came up. He's like, let me see your ID. I was like, fuck, I don't even, 
I, do I have an ID? I don't even know. I don't even know where my passport is. I don't even know where my social security card is. But anyways, like, I was really scared of getting deported because he, that white dude, okay, you know, this is like horror this thing, but like that dude, I'm scared of white dudes, okay? But that white dude, he was really angry. He was really buff and his face was red as if he just got into an argument. And I was really scared that I was going to get deported, especially when I learned that America has been illegally deporting people just for fun, you know, as if it's a pastime for our country. And apparently he asked all the people who arrived to show their ID as well, as if, like, we were the enemies of the state, you know? We were public enemy number one! <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you have not already. And in the comment section down below, please tell me what's the most fucked up part about Asian American history, or what's the most fucked up part about American history that belongs to your cultural heritage. And most importantly, remember to stay unbothered. Bye!